All right, welcome to today's show, everyone. We're going to dig into how to keep your relationship intact while doing a renovation and how to advocate for yourself with your contractor. So today's show, I have Susan Semenu, who is the president and lead love coach for Divine Inter Intervention Matchmaking, a company she started about 15 years ago out of a passion for naturally connecting and helping others. She's always found people, either a job or a partner, and continues to be fascinated by everyone's personal stories. She has always been the go-to gal for advice on relationships and matters of the heart. She has been up close and personal with over 6,500 singles, that's 6,500 singles, and the company has a success rate of over 70% at helping their clients find relationships. Her company was also awarded the Consumer Choice Award for Best Dating Service in Vancouver, and she works with clients across Canada. So welcome to the show today, Susan. Thank you, Brandy. Thanks for having me on and hopefully have a great show and save yeah. some relationships from trouble. <laughs> I really wanted to have you on the show because renovation can be really stressful. And we find that couples sometimes struggle with how to manage their decision making, especially when people want opposite elements or, you know, have divergent tastes. And um, they also have a bunch of different comfort levels around the spend. Sometimes one person is a little bit more, you know, open the wallet and the other one's more like, no, no, I don't want to spend. So um, oftentimes we feel like a little bit of a marriage counselor from time to time getting in between people. So I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to have you on and um, just see what you might suggest as, uh, you know, tips and tricks to kind of manage your relationship through your renovation. Okay, great. Well, we can just start about general conversation. So this applies to everything, but with a renovation, like with anything in life, it can be unpredictable, chaotic, disruptive, and whatever is going on in your relationship is going to be heightened and magnified, just like we just saw during COVID, right? So everyone is at like a heightened alert, and there's trigger points for sure. Um, so one of the key things with couples, you need to understand that, you know, conflict is going to happen. Fighting is not a deal breaker. You know, we all fight and relationships go through ups and downs. And you have to try to start with an end goal in mind, number one. And there's actually a statistic that I pulled too from House that one of the founders said that about 12% of couples uh, think about divorce or will come close to divorce around renovations. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, so I was actually surprised about that. But also the good news is, is that 38% of couples are going to spend more time together, maybe making decisions. So one of the things that you talked about, Brandy, which is a hot point for couples all the time is money. So people would almost talk about or like to talk about couples uh, about anything else other than money. So that is an absolute trigger point. And I wouldn't recommend, you know, going in without having that discussion. Sometimes there can be someone like there's different spending styles um, in a relationship. So you need to come to the table understanding what is a budget that you're going to work with? How are you going to pay for this? And also probably anticipate at least a 10% overage of things going wrong. And I know you and I were talking to me, you said the cost of lumber recently has just gone through the roof with COVID supplies have gone through the roof. So you always need to have flexibility because life just like this particular task is going to be unpredictable. So manage your, your, your money talk beforehand privately when you go to the table and start talking with a contractor. I'm intrigued by what you said too. So when you meet with your couples, do you find, and, and there's issues that they haven't communicated in advance about money? Yeah, oftentimes we find that um, everybody sort of seems to have a thermostat set for themselves around money. Mm -hmm. And they, like you say, they have different spending styles and whatever. And oftentimes people are like, well, we don't know how much this is going to cost. I don't know. What, what do you think we should spend? What do you think we should spend? And it kind of comes down to, um, sometimes it comes down to, hey, like, is your, is your budget idea, is it an anchor? Like, do you, can you not spend a penny more? Or is it more of a guideline? And then if something came up that you really had to have that you could, you know, extend out a little bit further. Um, with money being so cheap these days, oftentimes, you know, it, it is really just an arbitrary comfort line of spend that, that comes up against our, our thermostat for spend. Um, but everybody's set point is a little bit different. So, you know, having some of these foundational pieces in place around the money, especially is a good thing to have a conversation about before you even get started. 
And I would say around that too, you probably also want to look at a, a low, a medium and a high. So always have a range and have parameters. And when you're speaking, speaking with someone like you to say, you know, what are our options on like the Cadillac version, um, you know, yeah. the Toyota, whatever it is, like just have a, you know, a different range of options and see where you can have flexibility. But money is definitely one of the biggest stressors. So understand that communicate with your partner going in and understand, as you said, how are you going to pay for everything? And how are you going to budget if things don't go according to plan? And depending on the scope of the project too, you know, a tip that I may have, um, depending on where you are in, in your relationship history, if it's sort of like going on a holiday for the first time when you just meet a new couple, that's going to be a huge test. If you don't get along on your holiday, you're probably not going to last living together or going to a marriage. So why don't you try initially just doing like a mini project with your partner, whatever that is, and see how you end up faring that way. Because that most likely is going to be a replication of how things are going to move going forward. So that's the money piece. Money, money is so important and always important to chat about. Um, another thing, too, that I think is really clear to talk about is tastes. And often people have divergent tastes. You know, Vancouver, losing our city as an example, there's a lot of um, mixed marriages and backgrounds. So someone coming from one part of the world might have one type of design style, someone else may have another. I have friends where one person is like super classic traditional, the other person is modern. So that is another thing that can create an additional stress and anxiety. So if you can preview and chat about options and before and see who's going to win where. And I always say too, just like with dating or relationships. So what are your non-negotiables? What are you not going to give up on? And then what are the things that you can cut some slack on too? So you always want to understand that the big things matter and let the little things go. Like you're not going to win every single battle. So talk about things that way. What yeah, do you think, Randy? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Um, sometimes we suggest as well, like if it's a larger project, say it's a whole home, like let's get an interior design team in and we can really help hone and, and create a really harmonious plan throughout. Um, other times, if it's just a just a kitchen or just a bathroom or, or something, a smaller project like we were talking about, you know, oftentimes I'll say to both people, hey, like go through house or Pinterest or whatever, like find some images online of what your ideal vision would be on that. And then we can talk about how to bring that vision to reality. And if the taste is totally divergent. Then we have to have a conversation around, well, what exactly do we want to, maybe even what, what do we want to feel when we go into that room? Do we want it clean and bright and airy and whatever? And like, maybe somebody has, like you say, that non-negotiable, whether it's a freestanding bathtub or a walk-in shower in the bathroom, or maybe in the kitchen, somebody really, really needs to have a certain kind of countertop, but the other person is really keen on a, a type of cabinetry or the flooring, well, how do we mix all that together and come up with sort of some compromises along the way? Um, generally, by the time we kind of get to the actual point of doing the work, we already have all that sorted out. <laughs> um, but yeah, some, sometimes we're, we're having to handhold people through some of that decision-making for sure. And I always think to leave room for an expert to come in and to improve on what's there. And also what can be really common in couples that I've heard from conversations with people is that one person may be really attached to something and the other person may not be or be more an avoidant personality, you know, be on the go with other things. So maybe not as invested. And the person who is really invested is going to get frustrated with a lack of communication. So people come to decisions at different times. So it's just like planning your wedding. The bride might really be interested in the wedding and the groom doesn't really care. And then, you know, the day of the wedding, like there's all, there's this pressure. So just yeah. recognize that there is pressure and some things may not be uh, of the same magnitude to the other person yeah. or as timely and important, depending on what else is going on with their life, whether it's work or kids or whatever. Um, yeah. So well, you I think sometimes, sorry, Susan, to jump yeah, in there. Um, I think sometimes too, if we're doing a larger scope of job, maybe somebody is like, is really interested in how say the kitchen is going to turn out. Usually it's the primary cook. They really want to make sure that that yep. space is going to function for them. So maybe they make the majority of those decision-making um, 
bits on the, whatever goes into the kitchen and the other partner is really, you know, has to have their bathroom set up a certain way or they need a living room or a fireplace or whatever it is, or maybe they have to have flooring in a certain, you know, type or whatever. So then they take ownership of that component of the renovation so that you can kind of divide and conquer a little bit. Um, I know for myself with Paul, um, we learned early on to like let one person take the lead and then the other person support. Uh, if somebody had a really clear vision of whatever that room wanted to be. And yeah, the other person could add into that conversation. But um, usually if somebody had a really clear ver vision of what we were going to be doing, I was like, okay, yeah, you go ahead, you do it. I'm going to support you or vice versa. And it basically took that, that need to like grind every decision out. It was just like, no, I'm going to support this. You just tell me what you want to do and I'll, I'll happily support it. So sometimes it's just a matter of going, yep, you know what? you have a stronger vision on this and I'm going to support that. And then when it's my turn, you support me. And that's so well said, Brandy, because usually there is often a dominant personality um, that's going to have opinion on, on one area, right? So it's give and take. This whole conversation today is about effective communication and compromise and having a style that works and knowing when to give and when to take and when to speak up. And that's the dynamic that you need to go through. And another thing that's really important too is you can't let it be all consuming for your life. You and I were talking a little bit online, uh, offline before that, you know, maybe have hours during the day where you treat this at a, as a job. If it's a really large scope, you know, you do things away, you have trust in the people that you're there, you have updates every day, but you don't do this 24 seven because it will drive you crazy. Yeah. Life still continues. And it's so important that you take time for yourself. It's so important that you still have a routine, depending on if you have kids in the house or animals or whatever it is, you have to structure your life around uh, still functioning at a high level with the chaos. And yeah. how do you navigate that? There's some tips and some things that you can do that we can certainly go through, um, you know, to talk about making your relationship safe and Everything starts to Brandy with having a good contractor. So, you know, having a good team around you is going to take a lot of the pressure off of things. So it's yeah. just a question of navigating it's ongoing communication with your team um, and making sure that there's daily check-ins and everyone is different. Some people you know, like to not be as hands-on other people are control freaks. So whatever the communication dynamic is, but I can't stress enough about communication being the foundation. And understanding as well that tensions are going to run high. So uh, when they do, how do couples navigate those types of things? So I don't know if we want to get into some of those. Do you want to touch on some other things first? Well, I, I just wanted to just kind of reiterate the, um, the, the ability to just set aside this renovation piece, just like you would maybe set aside your work life yep. and yep. really be in your relationship. Um, I think that's another key component of managing the madness, as I call it, like you want yep. to set yourself up for success. So when we talk, we're talking about maybe setting up a, a secondary kitchen if we're doing a kitchen reno or a living space or, or making sure that you book time away, maybe go on a weekend uh, trip somewhere so that you can like pull yourself away from the whole thing. And, um, you know, it, it just becomes like a cost of the renovation in the end. But I love this whole idea of just switching off the renovation and the talk around it. And you just have a chance just to be uh, like who you regularly would be. I think that is a really good tip. And if you even have time, if it's a really large scale project, <laughs> like completely move out. If yeah. you can afford to do that and build that in um, and just have like a more intensive project, it depends. Again, you know, things are driven by budget and things are also by timing. And then speaking to budget and timing again, you know, life is imperfect. Renovations can be imperfect. Things can take longer in the supply chain or people sick or whatever it is. So you have to account for things exactly go according to plan on timing and other things. And so how do you deal with that? And it's so important for couples on a daily basis. Um, and th this is a proven fact that if you look at your partner through rose colored glasses, and choose to see the good, you're actually gonna think better of your partner. So regardless of how bad the day is, if things don't go well, you have to, at the end of each day when you shut off, 
you have to say one good thing that you were grateful for that happened in the red that went well for that day that you can build upon and you know all positive and dealing with your partner that day so every single day regardless you have to express gratitude like that is probably my number one thing and that's really important to when you might be feeling extra anxious or whatever uh, and we're going to talk about how to express gratitude properly to your partners too if we have time for that as well, well and well, i just think, why don't we just get into that right now just the very ready? Topic. so yeah like let, let it rip Give it to us. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to give people some homework. Because, well, I'm going to talk first about actually conversations and fighting fair and fighting well. Yeah. Um, and because I think there's a lot of distortion when it comes to listening. And with the dominant person, too, the other person might just switch off. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you listen to what the other person says and almost parrot back what they have to say and shut up and let them talk. So, because <laughs> uh, a lot of times we always anticipate the next thing that we mm -hmm. want to jump in, especially if someone wants something particular to happen in a renovation. And if their partner has an objection, you want to make sure that you leave room for space for having that conversation around that. So just listen to what the other person is saying. And you always want to go back into uh, looking at my notes so I don't miss anything and just say, this is regular conversation. Am I clear in understanding what it is that you're talking about? Are the countertops the most important thing to you? If I give you those countertops, I want my bathroom. So whatever it is, like just understand that. And the number one thing in relationships that some people haven't been exposed to is actually fighting and disagreements. So you need to be in an environment where you recognize that having a fight does not mean that your relationship is going to end. So just have that as a ground rule. And I would actually say the corollary to that is I'd rather know where I stand with someone. I'm sure you're the same way, Brandy, because we're both really direct as yeah. opposed to keeping things inside. So you just want to make sure if there are any contentious issues that you ask the question, is there more of that? Is something bothering you? Do you want to talk about something else? And it's really important to have those conversations without polarizing or saying, you know, you're stupid or anything negative like that. And it's just really, again, an affirmation of communication and the homework for your listeners um, there's a book, love me, love me some homework. Love Give us the homework. <laughs> getting the love that you want. It's all about safe communication styles. Um, and if you don't want to read the book, you can go watch some YouTube videos for an hour or so, but this is an Oprah recommended book that I always talk about that saves couples from divorce, especially around stressful times. So getting the love you want by Harville Hendricks, uh, Oprah Winfrey, who I love has recommended this, but the couples are on YouTube. Um, you know, just having a conversation dynamic and it talks about conflict re resolution, listening to the other person, talking to them the way that they want to be spoken to, because sometimes you don't know what your partner's thinking. There could be a slow boil going on in that kitchen of disaster and the person's just repressing everything. And then all of a sudden it's going to come out a few days later with something else that you've asked. Yeah. So that ongoing dialogue is so important. Do you experience that when you see some people that one person is more talkative than the other potentially? Yeah, for sure. Um, and like I say, usually somebody is is more invested in whatever element or, or room that we're talking about. Um, we have had a few couples that I go, wow, you guys have a great communication. Like, it's just like, you know, it's great to work with them. And then others where you can really see that they're struggling with that dynamic and trying to figure it out. We have never worked with somebody or a couple that has split afterwards. Thank goodness. <laughs> Good. But sometimes you can see that stress or like, like clearly they don't have that sort of foundation going on. So you, you mentioned something really critical. And I think this is something big for me, the gratitude piece. So let's bring that into that sort of around that renovation or, you know, whatever is going on within the couple and making all these decisions and living through it all. And, you know, it's totally applicable to our everyday life, but, you know, maybe just touch on the gratitude piece. Sure. You can say, thank you, honey, for upgrading my choice of stove or appliance to what I really value, like whatever it is that they've done for you. That's great. And I'm being facetious about the money, yeah. but just thank you for really being flexible today on letting me have my choice. And I promise to make that up to you down there. Or thank you for being calm under pressure today when the crew showed up two hours late, things didn't go according to plan. 
my Zoom didn't work for my meeting. Just thank you for something that you've done to make the day easier. Or Brandy, if everything is in chaos in the kitchen, thank you for going to the store and getting my favorite takeout meal. So what I'm reflecting is acts of service. Right. Um, so this gets into the love languages. So the love languages, for those of you that don't know, uh, are pretty common. Uh, you know, five lovelanguages.com, the number five, and there's also five apology languages.com. So those two, um, I value acts of service. I don't need to, oh, I, I like being told that I'm wonderful, but I'd rather- <laughs> who, does, who doesn't like to be told they're wonderful, right? <laughs> well, what some people really need, so there's words of affirmation, there's acts of service, um, there's physical touch. It takes a couple minutes to do this and understand what makes the other person tick. So some people just love hearing, like the gratitude thing, going back to that, you should be grateful, A, that you've survived the day and something good has happened. So acknowledge and say it out loud. When you say things out loud, it actually validates them, just like when you write things down in a journal. Right. So back, and I know I'm jumping around, but the love languages and the apology languages are really important here because we all speak to our partner. We should speak to them in the way that they want to be spoken to. So just because I like being treated in a certain way, like a lot of men really value physical touch and intimacy. So the gratitude for your male partner may be totally different. You can say, thank you for bringing this to me. And then you can reward them with something positive, uh, which leads us to the next point too. It's really important to try to have some intimacy through all of this chaos. You know, when women get really stressed and bogged down with a lot of things and we're trying to multitask them, to exclusion of men, but a lot of times working moms and add this on as another layer, have a lot of things going on. So physical intimacy could be the last thing on, on the relationship front at the end of the day when you're exhausted. So you try, you have to try to carve out like a date night away from it all. And then intimacy is just so important to reconnect as well, just to bond you together as a couple. Even if you're super irritated with the other person, you need to try to do the positive. And um, that's an important thing. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, it, it just that sort of rolls back into like switch the reno off and just get into being with into your relationship as you would normally do and work on the things that you would normally, you know, put into that relationship to make it good and healthy. Right. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm rolling through past like the, the interaction between you and your partner. Um, oftentimes people don't have a clue about renovation or construction and sometimes they're like, oh, I don't know if I should ask this or whatever. So I thought maybe we could shift a little bit into maybe tips and things to help them to advocate for themselves with their contractor or with their designer when they're making all of these choices. Because sometimes people get really shy or that maybe their ego won't let them ask a question because they don't want to look like they're stupid or that they don't know something. Um, and I, I always say like, there is no stupid question and I'm always available to to answer those questions, just shoot me an email or a text or ask me in person. Like I would rather answer that question than have it sit there and fester. So um, I usually try to really make myself very accessible, but I know that being a woman running my show is a lot different than maybe a man running his company and maybe the, well, either partner, but typically the female partner may not feel as comfortable bringing up her questions. So I'm um, maybe just talk to that a little bit. So you and I get along because we think the same way. So <laughs> I'm always an advocate. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Know what you know, know what you don't know. And I just think you always should just be really direct in your approach. And the reason that you're going to someone like yourself is that you are an expert. And that speaks to the chemistry, again, that we touched on before with your contract. You're like, you have to feel comfortable with the people that you're with. And there will be a degree of comfort, you know, the more you work together and yeah. that trust factor. Um, but back to asking the questions, like I never have a problem. There's always going to be people that are better at a lot of things than me. And so if there's taste that I like with someone else, I'll ask them, where did you get, that? where did you buy that? Um, with my friend group um, or partner, I will always ask their opinion. I always reach out to people that I respect. 
So you can maybe do some research that way. Like if there's a friend, um, a family friend or a place that you like to go to when you value what you see in their home, ask them, you know, where they went shopping, what their tips are, like anything like that, that you can pick in. And I would also say to do your research before. If you feel that you're not an advocate um, for yourself in terms of renovations or you don't know what you're doing, why don't you research some of the top tips or go to some of the top house, uh, you know, go to house, get information to yeah. see some of the questions that you should be asking, you know, about insurance, about, you know, coverage and warranties and how long is this going to take and what are your recommendations? So that is my personal advice. Um, and if you're shy, you better change your perspective <laughs> because this is your place. This is your money. And just experiment with getting a voice um, and just so educate we, yourself. We, we off, uh, if I notice that that is the case for somebody, I will often say, hey, like just to say, hey, I don't know what you think about this. Like oftentimes putting that little caveat in the front or, hey, I don't know if this is something I should even be asking about. But and then it just gives you license and freedom to just say it and not have to worry about exactly how you're phrasing it or maybe you're saying it incorrect. Like you just say, you know, I don't know how to blah. And I'm just going to say whatever is in my mind. And it's almost like it just gives people a little bit of freedom to not worry about being exactly perfect in how they're asking that question. Um, and I often will too say, hey, like, do you understand what, what I mean by X, Y, and Z when I'm explaining a process or what we're going to do next or whatever? And they're like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're saying you're going to put a footing in and then a I, I, I don't know what that means. So I will oft, I as a contractor will often ask people, do you understand what that means? And that gives them the opportunity to not have to ask that question, but to be able to say, no, actually, I don't know exactly what that means. Can you explain it? Whereas they wouldn't go, hey, I don't know what that means. Explain it to me. So, I, you know, giving that window of opportunity is something that I like to provide, um, especially when I notice maybe somebody is not quite sure what's going on. And that's really important. And I think that it can lead to another question. So we belong, we work together in the same business group. Some people may be more shy talking publicly than others. So maybe in terms of being an advocate, because some people have to reflect at the end of the day. So maybe they're not quite sure what it is that they want to say, or they want to process things. Like I can be really knee jerky and just start talking, but someone else will, will think about it and analyze. So in terms of an advocate for, your, for yourself and what it is that you want to accomplish with your project, maybe you communicate via email um, and you can detail your thoughts or, or that way you can put them down in writing and bring them back and have a conversation at another point. Because sometimes there might be a delay that needs to be processed. But Brandy, your style of communication will make everyone feel comfortable. Because okay. I really think it's important that, you, well, it's all about dialogue. You have to ask open-ended questions. You can even start by saying, you know what, this is new to me. I don't know what I'm doing. I need your expertise. Uh, you just want to make sure that someone's not being taken advantage of. Of course, yeah. So, yeah. And so you're the poster child of the female in the male dominated industry who yeah. has to be there and be respected with all of these men. Like, I don't know if this skews 95, five, but if anyone can give tips on how to advocate with that whole industry, you're it, Brandy, you could probably do a whole episode and I'll interview <laughs> you on that, on how to do it going forward. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm totally going to plug myself here, both on the all things renovation podcast and all of the the uh, previous episodes and then a, whole, a bunch of information on the would be our website with the blogs uh, i do have a whole bunch of information around all of this stuff but um different people come to things in different modalities just like we're talking about our conversation style or our ability to have a question be uh posed or you know put out there you know i do often ask people too like what um, you know, what modality works best for you? Is it email? Is it text? Is it in person? Is it on the phone? You know, and within reason, I'll try and meet whatever that is. Um, and, you know, part of my job is to capture all of that information and make sure that it's being recorded somewhere. Um, but overall, I just think that, um, you know, it, it just really comes down to, again, like that base level communication how are we going to work this? Let's make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're comfortable, that nobody's feeling um, like they're feeling inadequate or, or whatever. It just, it just needs to be something that, hey, this is just a renovation. This is just what we're doing. And feel free to ask me a question if you need it. 
That's perfect. And there's an end, there's an end goal in sight. And I would always say too, leave room for flexibility. Yeah. Right. So always and keep, and keep your eye on the prize. The, <laughs> the eye on the prize is the, is the end result. Let's not get lost in the minutia of, of all of the, the the madness of having to deal with all the little tiny things that maybe crop up along the way. Yeah. And that's like a metaphor for life as well, which I'm going to lead to one more thing about the positive and back to the renovations and, your, and your, the couples and, and, you know, moving forward in a constructive way. I think another tip that's so important um, that I always talk about is there's no negativity before bed. And there's no more talk before bed. So acknowledge that the day is over. If there's any issues, don't bring them up at midnight before you're going to sleep. You carry them over to the next day. You have a good night. And then once you have the conversation about what may have not gone the best or that you disagreed with your partner on something or something that didn't go well, like you discuss it and you move on and you don't hold on to it indefinitely like that don't hold the grudge mentality. It's like, you have to do that and move forward and don't bring up a month down the road. Well, Bob, you know, you didn't bend on this one or didn't agree with me. So I'm going to hold it against you. Like it's always, as you said, the end goal, moving forward, positive perspective, being flexible. I love it. I think that's a really good place to leave this conversation for today. Unless you had any other tips and things that you wanted to share with us. No, I just want all of the people that are listening is to watch the video or read the book, Getting the Love You Want, about safe communication and conversations, so important, and then understanding how your partner wants to be spoken to. So to acknowledge them through a very stressful time, which is the five love languages.com, which is a couple of minutes. And I really appreciate your time, Brandy. And what I'm going to say is everything, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record, what we said. It's communication and you're great at it. And just recognize if there, I would say too, if you recognize that there's trigger points with the couples um, or that you're dealing with, you know, you don't always have a, a couple that's always going to agree on everything. Maybe just separate them um, through the way of communication to touch base with them separately and then encourage them to resolve and then just come back. Um, but anyway, I, you know, exactly what you're doing. You've hit the nail on the head with everything. And then also to try to have some fun in the chaos. So still make time for a date night and make time to go out and enjoy the summer, the spring, this is being filmed right now in in the summer, like enjoy the positive things, spend time alone away from the madness and just enjoy each other. So thank you. So, um, and we'll put for everyone listening, we'll put the in the show notes, we'll put the links to all of those resources that Susan mentioned, as well as um, the way to contact her. If you maybe have a friend who's single and you want to have entertain some matchmaking services. Um, and before we absolutely close everything out, I always like to ask a couple of fun questions at the very end here. Sure. So I'm going to throw these out to you. Um, so what would you like to change or renovate most in your own home? Probably elements of the kitchen. Such as? Uh, Just the appliances, just upgrading, some painting. Uh, It's been a while as well. So just some touches to just bring it a little bit more forward. Cool. And then the the last and second question is, are you handy? And if so, what is your favorite tool? And if not, what tool do you think would be the most fun to try? Okay, I am not a tool person. Like when people in our group said that they want to buy any tool, that's it. But I would say if I had to pick a tool, I'm not handy, it would probably be a hammer. So don't ask me why, but I think that would be a fun thing. What's your favorite tool? Oh, too many to list. Um, You know, anything to do with like demolition is fun. Like a lot of people have said, oh, I love like the sledgehammer so I can destruct, you know, deconstruct some stuff. You can get out a lot of, a lot of aggression doing some demolition work. Um, but I, you know, there, there are some tools that, you know, are really invaluable uh, in the, the trade that I'm in, which is joinery. Uh, we have this little, little tiny ruler and it's just, it fits in your pocket and you can measure like really, really small um, increments of dimension. And uh, there's this other thing, we call it the, the cat's paw or the blue bar. And it, it's just the handiest little thing. It's got like a little, you know, um, flat end on one of it. You can pry things, you can lift things up. You can just tweak things a little bit here. And I, I don't know, it's just, again, just a really super handy thing. Um, and of course, then we have all of our regular 
the big, the fun tools, you know, like the table saws and the jointers and planers, the band saw, like, I don't know. I, I'm a tool girl. When we got married, we had a registry at Lee Valley. So that kind of oh says it all. God. So you're getting all excited just talking about this. I know. Look, stuff, like, look at me, right? <laughs> anyway, so, so you're the person who, who, who loves what you're doing. So that's so amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, enough about me. Uh, again, you know, it's been really great having you on the show today, Susan. And for those of you listening, um, I hope that you found some valuable tips and tricks maybe around keeping your relationship intact while you're renovating and be sure to catch us on the next show. Thanks, Brandy. Well done. Thanks. Ciao for now.